YouTube, what up though? Jermaine and Credit Fiend, welcome to my YouTube channel. Instead of doing y'all's, we can't do no y'all's because, and it got me today, man. Well, I guess last night, I don't know, but it stole my equipment, man. Took my weed eaters, my, you know, what is it? My edger, my backpack blowers, and I just had to go get brand new stuff, 1500. I said, you know what? <laughs> That's it for me today, right? I ain't doing no y'all's today, but I got to fight the negativity with positivity. So I'm going to share just information with you guys as a tactic man and i told you when they come back to me i'm gonna drop it so this one i was like i came up with this right here too and i call it the path of least resistance okay um so for education purpose only remember i'm only sharing my tactics i'm not sharing it for you whether you do for, for people to agree with it or not <laughs> i don't care if you agree with it or not this is my tactic okay and it's it's the path of least resistance okay and what i mean by that let me show you guys okay let me see if i can pull this up right here all right, let's go to this account right here. This is on Credit Karma, by the way. And I know y'all going to say, well, why are you on Credit Karma? That's not the actual report. I got something for you. Okay, so Path of Least Resistance, like this is a charge-off account, right? There there should be no one specific way you handle negative information, okay? That's why I came up with the Think Outside the Box method. I shared 11, I think 11 tactics of my tech, my Think Outside the Box methods with you all for collections, Okay, I have about 12, maybe 15 more. <laughs> okay, because it was this continues. I had to keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking because I didn't want to feel trapped. I didn't want to feel stuck, right? I don't know what to do. That's one of the worst feelings in the world. In my line, they want to feel that way. So as long as I kept getting creative, that's what it required, getting creative, it's just information, but how can I turn it around? And this one, I'm like, hmm path of least resistance that means i want to look for something solid now something solid that it's like but they're not the typical you know what i mean and you know you know the typical on the charge off account y'all know what i'm talking about balance you know date closed date open you know and all that kind of stuff but this one i'm gonna use this one and this one right here might help out a lot of people because u.s auto finance is out of business they were what bought out by what is it west late west gate west one of them west coast i don't give a damn which one it was it was something it wasn't it's not u.s auto finance though so company is out you know out of business unable to verify reported information or whatever right delete from my credit report had the least resistance <laughs> so that was one okay there's some other information on here too it's like okay you know that you can you know, like in this case, high balance, but I'm like, mm, yeah, but what I'm talking about something that's like, all right, let me, you know, even with some debt collect, they used to be debt, like common, I forget what the name of them, common something, common wealth, so I don't know the name of them, but like they literally had dissolved their business or, or at least their, um, what you call it in my state, right? So yeah, this business is dissolved. <laughs> so you know what I mean? That's the path of least resistance. Yeah. How are you going to verify for a company that don't exist? Okay. If they do say they verified as accurate, people go get that money, go get that Ken ass thousand dollars, right? I'm not offering any kind of legal advice, but I'm offering my legal opinion. Go get that, go get that damn money. I know that, right? If they violate, then they should compensate only if you're willing to escalate, right? Here we go. Let's talk about a collection then. You know what I mean? I'm only going to do two accounts, right? Because I'm trying to keep this video kind of short because, yeah, I'm going to, you know, even new equipment. I still want to go out there and play with it though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to go out there. So I want to drop this video real quick. So let's just say right here, Millions Credit. We know that they're a debt buyer. We know that. But instead of the typical FDCPA, you know, the balance isn't accurate. Instead of the typical, I'm like, what else on here is the path of least resistance? <gasps> Wait a minute. Original creditor name isn't that part of the validation of debt? Notice the debt content, so they are required to do. How can I spin that around? Original credit name, no info. Oh shit! This you see what I'm saying? Violation of the FDCPA, right? You know, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm disputing under the FDCPA. You are required to remove this count under the FDCPA because the original creditor's name is not present it's not verifiable is inaccurate or whatever you want to put put in your own words people we can't start we can't be using the same letters we got to get out of that that lazy ass dispute we got to get out of that all right trust me it it, it would probably hurt you more than help a thousand people using a letter 200 people get deletion you're going to hear all the deletion from the 200 people you're going to hear that but you're not going to hear about the 800 people that got verified as accurate come on yep so you see what i'm saying look at the original credit when you got a credit report and check it you can use like I used to find this on Experian app a lot. Debt collector, I mean, especially a debt buyer. 
it'll say original creditor, right? You know, LVNV. Oh, really? Booyah. Path of least resistance. Now, let's go ahead and talk about, because I know people say, well, it's a, but that's credit karma. Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> if the completeness, this is section 611A1A, all disputes to any consumer reporting ADC is going to be through here. If the completeness or accuracy mm, of any item of information containing the consumer's file at a consumer reporting ADC is disputed by the consumer, and the consumer notifies the, a the agency directly or indirectly through a reseller, that's what, well, that's what credit karma is. <laughs> and that's why they had the dispute button right here. Come on now. Keep it going. Come on, Jermaine. Come on, credit fiend. So well, I'm going to stop right there because we're talking about credit karma. So there's no need to finish reading all this right here because this is for a consumer reporting agency, not a reseller. So I got to go to the section of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, section 611 that is applicable to the reseller. Where's that credit fiend? We're going to go down to paragraph F, right? I know some people are like, eh, I went down there far before. Well, you now you can't say that no more. Now you have. Reinvestigation requirements applicable to resellers. So applicable to credit karma, applicable to smart credit, identity IQ, privacy guard. Gonna go on and on and on. Come on. Exemption. Okay, except for providing paragraph two. And that's where we go on. Paragraph two. Action required upon receiving notice of dispute. If a reseller, if a reseller, in this case, if credit karma receives a notice from a notice from a consumer of a dispute concerning the completeness or accuracy of any item of information contained in a consumer report on such consumer produced by credit karma. <laughs> I didn't IQ privacy guard, put it where you know where it fits, or whatever whichever one you're using. Credit karma shall within five business days of receiving the notice and free of charge determine whether the item of information is incomplete or inaccurate as a result of an act or omission of credit karma. And if Credit Karma determines that the item of information, I'm saying Credit Karma because I'm using Credit Karma, people. I don't want to confuse you. If you're using Identity IQ, then it would be Identity IQ. Is incomplete or inaccurate as a result of an act or omission of Credit Karma, not later than 20 days after receiving, 20 days, people, the notice correct the information in the consumer report or delete it. Or if Credit Karma determines that the item of information is not incomplete or inaccurate as a result of an act or omission of credit karma convey the notice of dispute together with all relevant information provided by the consumer to each consumer reporting agency that provided the reseller with the information now you see what i'm talking about so that's why they have this here and y'all heard what they said y'all did y'all catch that so you dispute this one account right here if i dispute it through this is equifax it, it said go to equifax dispute they are they also going to do what we sent your dispute request to transunion ah two in one you see what i'm saying path of least resistance all right <laughs> you see what I'm saying and then on the back side if the creditor furniture or whatever verify one delete it on the other well we're going to hit him with section 623 B duties of furniture of information upon notice of dispute one D if the investigation finds that the information is incomplete or inaccurate report those results to all other consumer reporting agencies to which the person furnished the information what results well in this case I'll show them the deleted results and then tell them that hey on the fair credit reporting that you are required to report these results to all other consumer reporting aids mm. that's it people it's jermaine the credit fiend thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video i'm gonna play with my new toys and i'll catch y'all on the next one y'all be safe out there peace